No, we're, we're just, we're, we've got the capability now to really push the limits of, mm -hmm. of all the bits and pieces in our systems, uh, mm -hmm. which we couldn't do a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Welcome to another Ask the Expert video from Boat How To. I'm Jan Attenstedt. And I'm uh, Nigel Calder. And uh, today we're going to talk about a question we got from somebody who's asking whether he needs a fuse at the output of his solar panels. So what's your take on that, Nigel? So technically uh, you might think yes, uh, because the boat building standards require a, a fuse or overcome protection uh, to all sources of power. Mm -hmm. And a solar panel is obviously a source of power. Mm -hmm. However, uh, there is an exception here. Um, because if the ampacity, the current carrying capability mm -hmm. of the conductor coming from the solar panel mm -hmm. is higher than the maximum possible output of the solar panel, mm -hmm. there's no way that solar panel can melt down the conductor. No. It just doesn't have the no. uh, energy to do it. Uh, so it's basically it, a self-limiting device. Exactly. Right? Uh. So then we don't need the, uh, the fuse. And in practice, if you size the uh, conductors to keep voltage drop down below 10% or even lower than that, say 5%, 3%, mm -hmm. uh, the ampacity of the conductor is going to be way above the maximum possible output of the solar panel, mm -hmm. so then you don't you need the fuse yeah. or the circuit breaker. Yeah. Uh, and the same goes for alternators because they're a source of power. Mm -hmm. um, although here there's a, there's a minor difference between the ABYC and the ISO. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, ISO says uh, if that alternator is wired back to the solenoid on the starter motor, which mm -hmm. it is, you know, with all uh, engine installed alternators. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's less than uh, half a meter in length or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't require overcome protection. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's not, and if we put a high output alternator on there, we're going to wire it to somewhere else on the mm -hmm. boat. Then they require overcome protection. Uh, the ABYC says, once again, if the ampacity of that conductor is higher than the maximum mm -hmm. potential output of the alternator, we don't need the overcome protection. Mm -hmm. Which should be anyways, if you want to uh, run the outer alternator the, the, at its maximum output. I mean. Well, the last thing you want is a fuse close to the alternator, mm -hmm. because when a high output alternator is running hard, the temperature on the case can be mm -hmm. uh, well over 100 degrees centigrade, 212 Fahrenheit. Um, and because the fuse is a thermal device, mm -hmm. if it gets hot, it, it might uh, melt the fuse, even though there's no overcurrent, and then mm -hmm. you destroy the alternator. Mm -hmm. so, so there's really no way you want to have overcurrent protection mm -hmm. at the alternator, although technically speaking, the ISO standards uh, currently require it if the alternator is wired to any other point mm -hmm. other than the solenoid. Okay. Uh Okay, well, that's maybe one way where you should rather stick to the ABYC standards then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of the very few places where the ISO is actually more mm -hmm. uh, rigorous than the ABYC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, but of course, I mean, just to be clear, because we don't want any misunderstandings, no matter whether alternator or solar panel, you will still need a fuse on the battery side of the, the yes, cable. Yes, absolutely. Huh? So that's yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah. clear because yeah. the battery is not really self limiting or the limit is like a couple hundred or yes. thousand amps. Yes. So yep. you really want to make sure that your over current protection yep. on the, uh, when you start at the battery, that all the cables are properly yes. protected. Yeah. And, and if, uh, actually, Jan, um, I saw an uh, alternator installation recently. It's a 360 amp alternator, mm -hmm. which is kind of insane, but anyway. Um, so if, and it's using 105 C conductors, mm -hmm. which if we, if you look at our module on ampacity and insulation, you'll, you'll understand that. Uh, which basically, 360 amps in an engine room, because mm -hmm. obviously it's an alternator, it's an engine room, you have to derate the conductor and mm -hmm. the ampacity, you discover that uh, even a 4 orc conductor, 120 mil, mm -hmm. which is the largest we use in the boat building business, is not quite big enough. Um, so the, uh, the response here was to regulate down the output of the alternator uh, somewhat um, with the controller. Mm -hmm. But technically speaking, that alternator, if the controller doesn't work right, can uh, put you know 360 amps down mm -hmm. the conductor uh, and the conductor's under, now undersized, uh, it needs fuse. Mm -hmm. So the fuse is going to nuisance blow and then the alternator gets destroyed. So, so we're, we're some of the things we're putting on our boats right now, we really are pushing the limits mm -hmm. of of uh, conductor sizes and ampacity and fuses and, mm -hmm. and all these bits and pieces. Uh, and um, there, there, there is no good answer mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. Other than in that case, we could have used 
found conductors with a 200 degree centigrade insulation, mm -hmm. which then have a higher ampacity. Um, but you're definitely but pushing the limits. We are, we're say. doing it mm -hmm. with, uh, anyway, it's not uncommon now to see eight kilowatt inverters on 24 volt systems. Mm -hmm. And there again, you're talking over 300 amps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anytime you start pushing 300 amps through a circuit, uh, you're really pushing the limits mm -hmm. of what we can do with our, with our current technology yeah. and yeah. Our, the conductors yeah. that we're using and so on. Yeah, and just to be clear, the solution is not to parallel two smaller conductors in such a case. We talk about that in right. another video, right. so yes. check that out yes. because uh, this is not what you should be doing uh, yeah. instead. No, that doesn't, that doesn't work either. Mm -hmm. um, no, we're, we're just... We've got the capability now to really push the limits of, mm -hmm. of all the bits and pieces in our systems, uh, mm -hmm. which we couldn't do a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exciting times, I would yeah, say. It is. Yeah. I think it's really interesting. Uh, <laughs> and so if yeah. you want to learn how to properly wire your system and uh, make sure that you're complying to standards and uh, that your system works trouble free, check out our Boat Electrics 101 course and also our advanced marine electrics courses, where you learn all about such systems and all of this uh, stuff.